The dream life for many people includes home ownership. Being able to buy a home and hopefully be able to pay it off throughout the 25 to 30 year period of the mortgage. Those who do not buy are often then choosing to rent. Decades ago, renting was considered either a waste of money, a temporary situation, or all I can afford. Today, things have changed. Millennials are renting anything that you can imagine. Is this a wise decision? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, we are going to take this in a different direction, a different path, and trying to understand this new culture that has formed. We're talking about rent. Now, traditionally, when I say rent, you're thinking renting a house, renting a condo, renting an apartment, maybe renting a vehicle. But today we're going to look at so many other things that you can rent that have completely changed the system that we live in in a real short period of time. So let's look at this first. When we're talking about rents, oftentimes most people think of their home. Should I rent? Should I buy? You look at the pros, you look at the cons. And I could personally give pluses and minuses to each of this. I'll probably discuss some of this through the video, but I think it's really important to understand how things have changed and what people are doing today as a result. Individuals today have found themselves in a bind. Assets have appreciated to a level that has pushed many people out of the ability to buy them. One example is real estate. Even the rents in many places have become too expensive to get into a traditional home, traditional condo, and even apartments. So a new idea has sprung up. This is one example. It is co-living. Essentially, dormitory-style living for people in big cities usually where they rent a room in these spaces and they share certain facilities. This might be great for many and terrible for others. But the fact that it exists tells us that people are really in need of these services. There are many of these that have sprung up over the last few months. To reiterate the situation, we have experienced extremely high asset appreciation and that has resulted in individuals being unable to afford their homes, their cars, and so on. So they turn to rent. This is a problem for some people, other people love it. So it depends on your particular situation and I don't judge either way. But I wanna present you with the information today and you can see for yourself, is this a good idea or is this a bad idea? It depends on you. Now we can take it one step further. You can look at vehicles. You can go to any traditional car rental place. You can rent the vehicle for the weekend. Maybe you're on vacation for the week. You arrive at the destination, you get your vehicle, and you bring it back at the end of the week and you're done with it. But now today, there are many services which allow you to rent a vehicle for a day, for an hour. This happens to be car to go. So essentially, we have been jam-packed into these dense populated cities, and oftentimes, many people don't own a vehicle. But there are certain instances when it would be really nice to have that vehicle. Maybe you need to go shopping. Maybe you need to go to a further destination where public transit won't take you. So these type of services fill in the gaps. car to go happens to be just one of those, but I have seen many. Essentially, the way it works is that you use your smartphone, you find the vehicles nearby you, you unlock it with that, you get in, you use it, you get to the destination, you push the button on your phone, and it locks the vehicle, you're done. You paid through the phone, the transaction is complete, and now the car is no longer your responsibility. You can take this even one step further. There are services like Lyft and Uber where you don't even own the car for those few minutes you were driving it. You are essentially renting the driver in their car to take you from point A to point B. No responsibility whatsoever. You simply get in, you get out at your destination. You pay a fee accordingly, which is dependent on the type of service that you want. If you want a more luxurious vehicle, you can get one of those. If you want to share a ride with another individual to cut the cost, you can do that as well. These services have obviously expanded. You've seen their growth. You've seen them in the news. You see them driving down the street. It is very popular. There's no doubt about that. 
There are many people who believe renting is a waste of money, but there are other individuals who say you definitely should do this to save money. Kevin O'Leary happens to be one of those individuals. Don't buy a car, do this instead. He tells the story of the fact that he has a Mercedes and it came time to renew the lease. Mercedes called him up and said, look, it's time for the new vehicle, come take a look. And he said, you know what? Forget it. He didn't even want that vehicle anymore and he's using Uber and Lyft instead. That's what he said. I don't know if it's true or not, but he makes a point and it's simply that it's too expensive to own a vehicle. And if you live in a city where you could potentially be taking some of these share services like Uber and Lyft or maybe public transit instead, then it's much more economical to do so. And it depends on the city. If you look in this article, actually, they break it down. It depends on the city you're in, depends on the expenses that you incur for your vehicle, depends what type of vehicle you have. Of course, there are many factors here, but it makes a lot of sense in the way that he puts it. I don't agree one way or another, but you take it how you want to. Getting around the city isn't limited to just vehicles either. You have these scooter services that have popped up now, Lime and Bird being the two most popular. Then you have the bike share services. So no longer do you need to own this equipment anymore. You just rent it when you need it. There's a lot of maintenance that could go into these different methods of transportation, whether it's your car, whether it's your bike, and so on. And many people don't want that responsibility. They don't want the cost associated with that. They'd rather just rent for today and worry about tomorrow when it gets here. Now, this goes beyond transportation. You could rent just about anything today, even your iPhone. The iPhone upgrade program directly from Apple, a new iPhone every year, and the coverage you want from Apple Care. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Well, basically, the way it works, and I'm not sure if you've ever seen this before, you actually trade in your existing phone to them so you give it up the phone that you probably own and now every year you give up your phone you are renting it so you don't even own your cell phone any longer. You rent it from the company, you have to give it back every year and you pay a monthly fee. So no longer do you just pay the monthly fee for the service, you pay to rent the device as well. Things have really changed in a short period of time. You remember those days when you used to buy the VHS? What about the DVDs? And more recently, people have these Blu-ray players. Well, you don't need that anymore. All you need is Netflix and the online streaming services. So you don't own anything physical any longer. Today, you just stream everything. You pay a monthly fee and you can stream that information to you. As long as you have a network connection, you'll be able to get that. But we don't have that thing that's physical anymore. You don't own it. You are using it temporarily. And that's a big difference. But for many people, they couldn't care less. It all depends on your personal situation. So we talked about transportation, we talked about cell phones, even your DVD collection, but what about furniture? Even your furniture you can rent today. This happens to be one company, Feather. I'm sure there are many others out there. And you can go into this website, you can rent what you need, get it to your doorstep, and enjoy these nice pieces of furniture that you don't even own. So let's go even further. This is RentZ. Now this is just one example of a website. There are so many of these, but essentially you can rent anything. It's individuals renting to each other. So you look at your local area, you can see if they have what you need. Maybe you wanna rent a camera, for example. You have a event coming up. You want a nice professional camera. You can't afford it. You don't need it after. So you decide to just rent it instead. This is the the type of website that you would look at. And of course, there are so many other services out there. You have all these different ones like Spotify, where you don't own the CDs anymore. You don't have the cassette. You don't have the record. You simply stream the information. So things have really, really changed. In fact, even Monopoly has changed. Monopoly for Millennials board game. When I initially saw this, I was convinced this is a joke. This can't be real, especially when you read the title of it. If I can show you here, it says, forget real estate, you can't afford it anyway. 
And I just, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that Hasbro would actually make something like this. And then I saw it on Walmart's website. You can see it for yourself. Look at some of the things that are different about this Monopoly than the one you grew up with. For example, one of the spaces is Parents Basement. You have Friends Couch, Bike Share, Thrift Shop, Farmer's Market, things that today have become very popular with millennials, but also other groups as well. But obviously this is catering to this group of people. So I think I've made my point very clear now where you want to be able to do what's best for you. There is no wrong, there is no right in this case, but you have to look at your financials and you have to be able to explain it and break it down in utmost detail. Okay, the way you wanna think about this is to look at the individual expense. So for example, if that is your car, how often do you use that car? And if you could get away with it, does it make sense to rent a car using these car to go type services when you need it maybe once a week? If the other times throughout the week you're walking to work or maybe it makes a lot more sense to take the public transportation, then that would be a cost savings initiative. You could do so easily. Today, cars are extremely expensive. There's no doubt about that, no matter where you live. When you think about the car's expense itself, you look at insurance costs, you look at the gasoline, the maintenance, the emissions, and all the other factors that go along with that. You know, in Toronto, many of the parking spaces in the city are going for $200 plus per month. Just the parking space, that adds a significant cost to what you're looking at just to get around from point A to point B. So I could see how in this case, it makes a lot of sense to use another type of service. But again, depends on where you live, depends on your current situation, so on, many factors. So take the individual expense and break down the alternates and what that could save you, what the expenses are, and you work it out for yourself. And I know that you're gonna be able to figure it out and make sense of it all. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, you're supporting this channel. So I do appreciate that very much. You got to check out my books. I get into everything from the foundation of money, where it all started. I get into the history, the asset classes, how to profit from that. I talk about making money, reducing your debt, tax incentives, so much more. Check them out at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook, you can get that at themoneygps.com.